My name is Sister Alicia, and this is The Pulse for Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Friends, we are just a couple of weeks away from Holy Week and the Sacred Triduum, and I've really been thinking about Jesus' call to serve the poor. Here on the west side of Chicago, my community and I live in a really rough neighborhood, and I'm thinking especially of the young people in our neighborhood, and it's only because of my relationship with the Eucharist that I have been able to come to see not only the world, but especially God's children, the way that he sees them a little bit more. And these images of the poor, especially children, not just the materially poor who are all around us, but the spiritually, the emotionally, the psychologically poor children, teenagers, young adults who feel so abandoned and who many ways are. How is God inviting us in these last couple of weeks of Lent to pay attention to young people around us? Let us prayerfully consider how can we take a step toward a young person and introduce them to the love of Christ that we experience most profoundly in the Eucharist. This week in Heart of the Revival, we have a new essay in our Works of Mercy in the Eucharist series from Father Joe Laramie on the Work of Mercy Council, the Doubtful. We also share a testimony from Nicole in Mississippi about her experience of receiving the Eucharist and what that means for her as she leaves the Mass each Sunday. And now for revival news from across the country. Bishop Lewis Riker Catholic School in Waco, Texas, in the Diocese of Austin, was recently awarded the Eucharistic Revival Grant from the Scanlan Foundation in Houston. The grant was awarded to help aid educational efforts for high school students to grow in appreciation for the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Theology teacher sister Maximilia Marie got the idea to apply for the grant after her taking her students on virtual Eucharistic pilgrimages around the world using Google Earth. Using the grant money, six students will be awarded scholarships to attend the National Eucharistic Congress this summer, and in January 2020, the high school graduating classes of 2025 and 2026 will travel to Italy for a Eucharistic Miracles and Saints pilgrimage. Across the country, Catholic students and student groups have been hosting Eucharistic pilgrimages on secular university campuses. Arizona State University is one of the many campuses to be hosting Eucharistic pilgrimages throughout the year. At ASU, these processions foster unity among students and offer witness to a community that is often intrigued, if sometimes hostile, by their display of faith, said Ben Power, an ASU senior. I think for me, it's an important reminder of the public witness of my faith to have that reminder that what Jesus says to me is not just an intellectual truth that I assent to or what I do on Sunday, it's my entire life. It's a really good reminder to me not just to be courageous, but to live that joyful life in the world. And finally, we have perpetual pilgrims. The 24 young adults who will be joining the four pilgrimage routes in May have been announced. These pilgrims have begun their training and will continue to meet, train, pray and grow with one another in preparation for the summer pilgrimage. This week, I wanna share with you a testimony from Camille, one of the perpetual pilgrims who will be walking the Sarah route. Through her experience of the formation retreat for pilgrims, Camille realized that she could share her Eucharistic faith with non-Catholics. One night when she was going to dinner with someone she met at a networking event, something really special happened. Here's Camille in her own words. So we were walking to the restaurant. I knew that we would be passing a Catholic church that would have adoration during that time. I invited this person to step into the church and there was incense and our Lord was exposed on the altar. I spent about five minutes in the, the church with this person who was a non-Catholic. I prayed for this person and unbeknownst to this person, they got to spend time with our Lord in the Eucharist. When we sat down to dinner, I explained what we had just seen in the church. I told him about the Eucharist, what adoration is, why the Eucharist is so important to Catholics, that it's Jesus. I got to tell the person about our pilgrimage. I feel that the Holy Spirit has really been working in my life to give me the words to talk to people about the Eucharist when I never would have before. So I'm excited excited to see what the Holy Spirit continues to do for me and for the other perpetual pilgrims. Bye. As we wrap up the Pulse for this week, I'd like to share with you some words from Pope St. Paul VI. A holy hour brings heaven's choicest blessings on those who are faithful to their hour. On behalf of Bishop Andrew Cousins and the National Eucharistic Revival, Congress, and pilgrimage teams working hard across the country, thank you for joining us for the Pulse this week, and God bless you.